Hello, my name is Rich Zaria. In this presentation, I'll share with you some of my experiences while doing cave restoration in Central Texas. Why do we dig? We dig because we want to find more cave passage. We dig because we want to get scientists into new habitat. We dig to restore recharge to the aquifer. We dig to remove trash from pits used as dumps. We dig to follow the air because if it blows, it goes. We dig to spend time with our friends. We dig to get exercise so we can sleep like babies. We dig to show our kids what it's like to explore and discover new things. We dig because we want to know what's beyond what we can see. We dig because we want to know where it goes. We dig even when we can't see the way to go. And we dig when it seems like it will take forever. We dig when the weather is hot, the mosquitoes are terrible, the rain has ruined everything, and you find yourself digging in the dark. We dig to find beautiful new rooms like this one in Whirlpool Cave. We dig in order to travel and see new features like this exciting new find near Burnett. The landowner found this crack while I'm doing mulching. Um, the crack's probably about 30 feet long. The aperture that was here is about 15 feet down to mulch floor and soil. Uh, we took it down probably about three feet. It's still a soft, a soft dirt dig. Digging takes a lot of tools, and we like to be prepared for anything. Because we don't know what we are getting into, which is half the fun, it's best to have everything, including the kitchen sink. Pry bars, shovels, large picks, hand picks, scoopers, sledgehammers, gloves, safety glasses, earmuffs, helmets, tarps, buckets, hammer drills, batteries, chargers, bullpens, generators, buckets, extension cords, fans, water, booty scoops, and bags are all part of the gear it takes to be ready for a new dig. Soil is moved primarily with small two-gallon buckets, but when things are tight we use small sandbags that are easier to handle and maneuver out of the cave. And so those go back and forth collecting all that sandbag that's over there. Okay, I'm going to give you a view of what we're looking at this room is what do you think the dimensions of this room is more or less i would say 20 by 20. the sandbag method worked well while digging on spare rib there was no way to safely store the buckets on the surface but the bags stacked securely together the same was true for work in the main pit at black cap cave and got down to like little 10. sleeping bags, yeah, that's, that's so cute. Yeah, that was great. Snow and ice and rain. I'm going to follow these bags down. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, so it's kind of like... Howdy. I'm following bags. Oh, yeah. The life of a bag in South Austin. These Aggie diggers helped form a human chain that moved around 600 of these bags out of another cave in South Austin. Let's take a moment and talk about safety. This type of work carries risks, and it's important to take precautions. The most important thing is to get everyone home safe after the dig. Safety Officer Rich says, wear your frickin' safety glasses. Always check for death noodles. And be on your toes when the big rocks start moving around. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, oh, man. Four foot pry bars under pressure can reach out and bite you too. Remember, Safety Officer Rich says, wear your frickin' safety glasses. The process of digging usually involves removing soil until a rock or boulder emerges and gets in the way. This is how we make those rocks disappear. Hey, Eric, what are we doing? Well, we're drilling holes in rocks. And what are we using to drill those holes? Oh, we're using a Milwaukee fuel hammer drill. And uh, we're going to break a big rock and hopefully get into like a glorious pit. Yes, and why are we remo removing this big rock? <clears throat> uh, because it's a, uh, what we like to call a widow maker. It, it although is. I'm not married, so it would be a ex-girlfriend, dead boyfriend maker. Exactly. And, then what, and you're us what are you using to break this rock? Uh, we're using pins, bull pins. Bullpins were originally designed to help align steel beams during construction. We use them like feathers and wedges to break up boulders into smaller pieces. We use a 3 8 inch bit to drill approximately 10 inches down. 
It's important to drill the full depth in every hole so the pin doesn't hit the bottom. Greg is showing the proper use of a dusk mask when there is no airflow. The benefits of this technique are enormous. Even huge boulders that might have required more forceful methods can be safely broken up and removed. Ooh, I hear it. Crack. There it is. There it is. Get it. Slaughter Creek Cave had a boulder problem. Back in the 90s, a spiteful highway contractor dumped a load of these beauties to block the sink. Cavers eventually squeezed back in, but the rocks needed to go if real digging was ever going to happen. This big rock was hanging over the open pit, so Mason carefully moved the pieces away from the hole. We didn't want them to fall back in. We were able to break up and remove all the surface rocks and then started the process of emptying the main pit. It would be nice if we could remove this material as fast as the dump truck and the bulldozer pushed it in. Spare Rib Cave is located on the Jollyville Plateau in northwest Austin. When I started digging, the soil came within a foot of the entrance rim. Getting through the first choke was difficult, but I managed to avoid any pinning and resulting damage to the rock. The passage flared out and things got easier. Then a new challenge appeared as I approached a small pit chocked with boulders. I've got a little pit here in the second of two features at Park West that I've been working on. And then we got to this, got to the pit. This is kind of too small to work in. The stuff behind my foot here, behind my leg, is, uh, I think you could jackhammer it. Instead of jackhammering, I used pins to remove the offending lump. This allowed me to break into the room below. So the stone used to come out to about here. And I've taken away this whole mass. And this area right here is undercut by about, I don't know, eight or 10 inches underneath. And so that's my goal is to remove, remove all of this to make a relatively round area that then we can work and attack that floor down there. It took me nearly three days to accomplish this awkward task. Okay, here's the view through the pin and into uh, and into the, the, the lower room there. Muscle power, sweat, and toil is always needed when tackling these projects. Sometimes only elbow grease will get you through to the next part of the cave. So John Pixler, can you uh, tell us where we are today? Another cave. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing today? Digging. What are we hoping to find? A new passage. The Dwarven Kingdom. The newest place. John the Beast Pixler. Here Mason is putting the hurt on Gatorade sink. Drew is demonstrating proper picking technique. He is working on what has become a very large entrance room. With 14 diggers, this project produced approximately 1,500 buckets of material over two work days. Now, here are some power tools. Everybody likes power tools. Here's an example of a dig that did not remove everything from the project. This is Wade Cave in South Austin. 
The goal was to create steps down into the cave so school children could learn about the aquifer. The problem was how to bring material into the cave in order to build the steps. There just happened to be a detached ceiling layer that was due to be removed to make room for the structure. It was decided that these very large chunks would do nicely. Using a combination of chains, 20,000 pound straps, and a come along, we anchored to the existing Charlie Savis gate and proceeded to move 1,000 pound pieces of ceiling. Here is a short series documenting an average dig that has no name and does not go, at least for now. The sink was a shallow depression with a small aperture. Most of these features were filled by ranchers many decades ago. The first step was removing dirt until rocks were in the way, then pinning the rocks, then dirt, then rocks, etc. There is a going lead at the bottom of the feature, but it will be difficult to access without destroying the nice looking ledge at the surface. Someday, maybe we'll do it. One of the coolest projects of the last several years has been Jerry Bug Cave. My friends told me they heard there was a cave on their empty lot, so we dove in head first. Wanna switch? Get some water. I'll switch. <laughs> yeah. Agua. Or whatever I have. It's definitely sinking out. I can get my boot. That was as deep as my boot. Just my Let me freeze frame here to show you the setting. This dig is happening in the middle of a conservative neighborhood near Manchac, south of Austin. The Aggie diggers set up a tent city right in the middle of all the houses. And the neighbors love it. All right, so we are at the dig site that we've been working on all morning. Everybody wave. All right, so this is our hole that we've made. Pretty big, and this is the entrance. That this project has productively and peacefully interacted with average citizens who would never normally come into contact with caves is a testament to the hard work and discipline of all the Aggie and UT Grotto diggers. Uh, yeah, I gave a talk So far, we have a nicely decorated entrance room. Much more to come. Mossy Elm started as a rancher-filled sink on the Jollyville Plateau. It has since yielded a pit nearly 19 feet deep and still going. This was the entrance on day one. Boulders and dirt, boulders and dirt. More progress downward, more progress. As the pit got deeper, the logistics of material removal became more difficult. When there was help available, a rope could be used to pull the buckets up. The deeper I got, the slower it went. As it got deeper, more care was needed to avoid falling down the increasingly dangerous pit. It was helpful that the majority was a simple climbing exercise. At this point, the depth was 16 feet. We've got an area that's widening out. Go down in here, try not to die. So originally the, the rocks were right where my toe is. I got through that pinch point and then it flared out. And here's the view all the way out, 19 feet. Black Cap Cave is a recent success story. It was found as a series of small cracks blowing air. I picked up the project and have spent multiple weeks over the last year and a half. This is the feature as it was found, minus a few small rocks. This is the sink after several weeks of digging.
This is the entrance and tour on the day of the breakthrough. This is the small pit leading to the room. The room is about 20 by 20 in area and is covered with ceiling collapse. There is good airflow which leads us to believe that there could be pits below all this material. The initial effort was put into gaining access to the back of the room. This is the view back toward the entrance. I love to dig. My friends love to dig. It keeps me sane and out of the bars. There's always more to do, and the key is just never stop. So we don't stop until we find passage, or we run out of time, or we run out of people to help, or we lose access to the site, or the weather makes us go away, or we just get burned out. Like William that are, that are passing away, you know what I mean? And the more you dig and the more you push, the better your chances of having a day like my friend Ian had recently. Thanks for watching. Take a peek in every direction. I'm gonna be able to hand down Rich's phone too. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah, guys. Poison oh, a room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yucks. All right. We got massive ceiling collapse. Um, <laughs> yeah, massive ceiling collapse off of that where I'm at. How big is the room? Describe it. Uh, I'll tell you.